loses to the Misfortune. Of course, depends on your support matchup. So from IG here, I'd expect the Trundle because they don't play Jarvan. Lil Yen has played it once this split. Hasn't liked going towards that. You Maybe you could take away the Lee Sin as a comfort champion, but Trundle is a lot more of the expected go-to. And here would be the time to lock in the Misfortune in my mind. But Puff's only played it once. True, it's not something Puff has played a ton of. He has played a good amount of the Ezreal so far. This split, it would be weird to see an Ezreal so early on in the draft, but when the bans are the way they've been, it wouldn't be too surprising. But I think we're just going to see this mid lane matchup once again. Rookies LeBlanc versus Knight Syndra. Yeah, and if you're TS, I think once again, you just go towards this Lee Sin. Sure, it didn't have the same impact that you'd want last game, but Karsa has just looked so good on this champion. And if you're Jackie Love here, I think you just take the misfortune. I really don't see anything to be afraid of in what IG can pick in the bot lane. Maybe they can try to outrange you in terms of something like uh, maybe Caitlyn Morgana type situation, but... I don't have a lot of fear of that if I'm TS, but instead taking away the Ezreal. Yeah, the Ezreal goes the way of Jackie Love Carsa with his Lee Sin once again. And Jackie Love, he's only played one game of Ezreal this split, but it's something he's played countless times over his career. What disappoints me is I would love to see Jackie Love pull out the Draven. I've been ready for the <laughs> Draven this whole time, but we're not going to see that. And yeah, where does Puff go from here? I mean, Miss Fortune was available, but he's going to go with a Caitlyn. We're yeah. going to see this late game crit carry. And it's kind of interesting because you've already set yourself up in a sort of like pseudo siege composition where you have Peel and Disengage coming out from the Trundle. You have a lot of Poke coming out from your LeBlanc as well. And of course, Caitlyn functions as this artillery piece that just wants to sit in front of a turret and, you know, go to town. You see the Nautilus found away here by IG. And the Morgana immediately the answer from top esports. Caitlyn Morgana just too oppressive. They don't want to have to deal with that. And I do want to see them ban out another engaged champion. I was going to say you could go with the Leona or the Blitzcrank. They fear the Blitzcrank more. Makes me wonder if they want to go for something like a, a Caitlyn Yumi. They could go with Caitlyn Yumi, but also, Kate, I mean, Ezreal Yumi is certainly uh, a valuable pick for themselves as well. Suddenly, Yumi has risen very highly in priority in this match. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of a takeaway. And if you're IG, you're not really afraid of an Ezreal Leona all in your bot lane. Well, it's going to be the Jace taken off the board away from the Shy in the top lane. It's going to be this Karma. I mean, Caitlyn Karma, honestly, incredibly oppressive of itself. Well, and the cool thing is, if even if TS wanted to go towards the Ezreal Yumi, Enchanters do quite well into the Yumi. You're going to be able to push him out with this Caitlyn as well. So overall, I like that IG are going back to something that's familiar, and clearly they want to keep... Uh, Southwind on a small, effective champion pool. Oh, I love this hover. If they lock this one in, it would be 369 throwing down the gauntlet towards the Shy and saying, hey, go for that Renekton. Let's have this 1v1 the other way around. He's actually undefeated on the Aatrox. So it's one of 369's premier champions. He's looked good all split. And if Yu Yanja does want to go for more of a fighting option, the bot lane Leona is the expected pick. But this would really depend on Karsa and Knight heavily playing around bot lane. And do you know what? That wouldn't surprise me all too much when you've got this Ezreal that can snowball out of control and Knight has been roaming all over the map so far this game. You've got the Aatrox that can survive in a 1v1 if he needs to. We'll see where the Shy is going to go though. Bear in mind that, that Karma could theoretically still be a flex towards the top lane. Not really expecting that. Though. I don't expect it, and if you're going to go with something, I want to see the Shy pick up something that can play weak side. He's not going to do that because when you draft something like a Kalen Karma, this bottom lane demands attention and help from your jungler. Now, bear in mind, Kennen is the Shy's most played champion in competitive of all time. So this is pure comfort from his side, but also having a ranged matchup against the likes of an Aatrox, certainly going to be a nice little benefit for the Shy in a side lane. Of course, going to do him well in lane, but I don't expect him to go towards the side lane with this champion. He can build AD Cannon and try to play out through that 1v1. We haven't really seen that for Cannons. And it would be nice if he played at AP and then kind of served as a way to dissuade TS from coming in and letting the Karma and the Caitlyn poke out enemies. So let's talk AD carries here because we've got a Caitlyn, we've got an Ezreal. Two carries that I wasn't necessarily expecting to see today, but with so many AD carry bans, it changes the shape of the game. And you mentioned already that there's going to be a lot of focus towards the bottom side of the map, but both Ezreal and Caitlyn, when you think about them, you usually think towards the later stages of the game. It's a bit different, right? Because Caitlyn, you think of two things. One, very strong in the laning phase because highest range AD carry in the game, then kind of has a bit of a 
power trough in the mid game, you, you don't want to take team fights. You're all single target abilities. It's a lot more about sitting in front of turrets. But then once you hit three, four items, you come back online. And it's just kind of the complete opposite where you're very weak in landing phase. You come online in the mid game at like one, two items, and then you're strong from then forward. We'll see if that strength is going to come through for Jackie Love up against Puff. Puff saying before this game that he's feeling nervous coming into the series. He's hoping for five games, and the rest of IG are going to be hoping for that alongside him as it is 2-1 right now in favor of Top Esports. I'm just saying the dog gets me every time. It's the cutest dog in the world. But you know, what's not been cute is the battles that we've seen between these two teams in the early game every single game. You don't think Endless Bloodshed is adorable? I mean, Aatrox does, and we're seeing an Aatrox again this game. Already, though, action, you can see as IG moves straight into the jungle, get some deep vision. Rookie going to be defending his top side of the jungle, so Karsta can't do the same thing. And again... What we want to see from IG in the early game is play around this bottom lane, give them the vision to succeed. Because when you draft something like a Leona into Karma Caitlyn, you're going to get poked out and abused early on, but it's about finding those all-ins with Karsa and Knight able to follow up. I want to point out, you can see the Colonel is completely undecided on how this matchup is going to go back and forth all game long. But I want to point out an item here on the scoreboard once it's back, and that's that the Shy has gone for a cull to start things off, which kind of signals to me that He's very comfortable in this matchup. Well, yeah, and going to go for the Spellbook, so a lot more of utility, not necessarily looking to just hard punish 369, which is great when we've just said IG don't necessarily want to play around the top lane. I really like how IG have gone with this draft, where you're going to have some early pressure in the mid lane. We've already seen what Trundle can do against the Syndra. Your bot lane is going to push, so Lu Yan should be able to constantly look to fight Karsa around the bottom half of the map, and your comp also scale, scales very well. Well, last time we saw Karsa's Lee against Le Yen's Trundle, it didn't go so well for Le Yen. It was all about Karsa snowballing the game through 369 in the top lane. But I'm not expecting it to go the exact same way this time around as Rookie and Knight will continuously trade away in that mid lane. Once again, Rookie hitting that level two first is very good to see, but again, when it comes to spot lane, we should expect to just see IG constantly punishing TS, which is good because a few games ago, we saw TS with the Karma against IG's Tom Kench, and I can tell you that was not a fun time for Puff and Southwind. It really was not. Now they get a bit of a revenge for themselves, but level two hit, the Yanjia, not gonna go for the all-in just yet, not gonna be confident enough to try and make that play in the early game, because Lian is heading on down. Yes, yes. Oh, Tether onto Yu Yanjia, Jackie Love. I don't know if he went for the E second here. Heal comes out very, very early on. Ignite actually onto Yu onto Le Yen, a little bit. I, I mean, I don't think they ever had kill pressure there. Bit of an interesting one. No, I actually love that game coming out from Le Yen, just forcing the summoners from TS, ensuring the fact that you can constantly look to bully this lane. And we just want to see this constantly. Caitlyn with ranged support lanes are about taking these turret plays. Ooh, big trade in the top lane for 369. Gets the pull now onto Knight in the mid lane. Great flash from Rookie. Follows him. Denies with the scatter of the week. In comes Carsa. Misses the Q though. That means Leanne gets first blood. It's answered by Carsa. And he wants Rookie as well. Sonic Wave won't be able to land because the minions are in the way. Rookie gets away with it. Yeah, one for one, but Rookie being able to keep the wave is going to be very good. But the good thing for Knight, he should get back to lane in time before Rookie's able to push that into him. So he shouldn't miss out on too much CS. It's going to be a jungler kill for a jungler yep. kill there. Both I flashes, both ignites used in the mid lane. Now we've got to find the bottom lane as well. Yuyanja, though, he's gone way too far. He's going to be rooted up himself. Down goes the trap. Yuyanja falls 2v2 from IG in the bottom lane. And Jackie Love, he's got to dodge the traps. He's got to dodge the cues. He's got to dodge everything. But he gets away. And this is exactly what you want to see from IG's bot lane, securing that 2v2 kill. Also, while that was happening, Karsa did force out the wave in mid so that Knight can't, Rookie can't try to, like, hold it there. So resetting that for Knight and now allowing them to pick up the Scuttle on the bottom half of the map. And oh yeah, actually something <laughs> we didn't highlight is the fact that Aatrox does have an Electrocute, so a lot more about bursting and going for those all-ins rather than the extended trades you get with something like Conquer. Yeah, a little bit crazy, honestly. It's not something I've seen in a long while in that top lane. You usually do see the Conqueror from Aatrox, but Knight is moving up. 
towards this top side of the map. And once again, the Shy this time, though, gets away with his little lightning dash. He gets his bonus stun on the back of it. But Knight's here. The Shy has his flash available. Needs to dodge away from the Scatter the Weak. Needs to try and hold it as long as he can. But he's going to be stunned. No, one more auto gets it. I can't believe Knight got the solo kill there. Yeah, that was great coming from Knight. He just pretty much ignored the wave mid, walked up top, secured this kill. And now this wave is going to be in such an awkward place for the Shy. He is probably going to have to blow his TP. Not an ideal situation for the Shy. Has that call, so doesn't really have the ability to fight in these early skirmishes. And once again, we see top esports playing around 369. And this is also why I'd rather have seen like a tank or frontline top laner coming out from the Shy when Lu Yen should not look to be playing around this lane at all. We do seem hovering right now. Ooh, I wonder if they're gonna try and set up a dive. Not sure how well that would work out for them with 369 solving flash up. Also wonder how far off he is from level six. He's got to be pretty close at this point with that massive wave there as well. But Yuyanja wants to make a play of his own. Southwind is here off to the side as well. Yuyanja is going to be spotted on the minions. He decides it's time to move back down towards the bottom line. Southwind, he wants a 1v1. He wants a bit of support or combat in the river, but neither of them does any damage. And talking about bot laners, look at the items in the bot lane. Jackie love having that tier compared to Puff's BF sword. And I mean... Not much to see here. We see Knight hit these abilities. Ooh, flashes into it. Unfortunate. Lands the auto. And yeah, gets the uh, quote-unquote solo kill. Yeah, it was like solo-ish kill. He was the only one that got any gold from it, but definitely wasn't alone. And once again, 369 just completely abusing the Shy by holding this wave here. And I want to reiterate something you mentioned a little bit earlier. Knight has been sacrificing waves to make that play happen. Look at the CS deficit in that mid lane. Rookie is 15, 16 CS up right now. And it's because Rome, uh, the Romes have been coming out from Knight. Yeah, and we saw in that last play the fact that the wave did get pushed all the way to Knight's tower. So went back towards Rookie's side of the lane, built it up quite big, and now able to Threaten some trades, but Knight going to be able to pick a lot of this up, so it shouldn't be too far behind. Leanne, in the meantime, will go for this Dragon. Puff and Southwind able to get a push in the bottom lane and move up to help him grab that one for himself. And important that these AD carries are just about even when it comes to the CS, despite the huge poke advantage, the lane advantage that Puff and Southwind have. In the last few minutes, think about it, right? We've seen Lil Yen up towards the top side, so not really securing vision for these guys down in the bottom lane, because that's what it's about. We do see that they've been able to get a couple of plates, and that's what you want to do as Caitlyn. Take the spot lane turret, rotate up towards the top side, do the same thing, and constantly do this until you can get to like a two item point where you start coming online. No, we just see everyone clearing away, and this is a much slower pace of game. Despite there being more kills than the previous game at this point, we're seeing a slower pace of action when it comes to how frequently we see these two teams sparring with one another. Well, for top esports, it is a lot more about this level six power spike, especially once Yu Yanja hits it himself and gets that ultimate. And then that's when we really want to start see Knight and Karsa making their way to punish Puff and Southwind. What I want to keep my eye on is does Lil Yen just go and solo Herald with his pushing advantage in top lane and with Rookie able to come out ahead and trades in mid? That will be one of the big questions, but look where Karsa is right now. He's on the Gromp. And you can see Jackie Love and Yu Yanja move onto that bot lane tower. Kasa, he wants a pick for himself. Ooh. Dashes away, but he did get spotted there. Pings come out like crazy, and Rookie realizes he needs to play safe. Yeah, he's going to head towards the mid lane. Looks like he's just helping Knight get priority to shove this out. We've got a 3v2, though, because Kasa and Knight could be in trouble. Good kick away onto Rookie. Lien here, the pillar already used. Knight walks away with his life. Kasa forced to flash. Two flashes for one. You take that any day. Yeah, that was great aggression coming out from Rookie to start it off. Looks like Kasa was just trying to help Knight get the recall. It was, it was actually two flashes for two because Southwind flashed as well. So <laughs> it's going to be even in the end. I don't think he needed the flash, but... Well, whether he needed to or not, that's what he did. <laughs> that <laughs> he is true. two summoners for two in the mid lane here. As Knight gets to just clear things up once again. The CS lead is still there from earlier, but you mentioned Lien maybe being able to solo the Herald. It's actually Carso that's going to be the first one on the scene there. He's well aware that everybody knows this is going off, but he's confident enough to just start it anyway. Yeah, pretty surprising that we 
Saw IG kind of take so long, go for that mid play, now having to reset and not able to do the Herald themselves, and 369 going on a journey. Yeah, so well, he popped the world and <laughs> just gets denied by a giant old traffic cone. It wasn't a very long journey. Yeah, his world was only just beginning. Still, this bottom lane going the way you would expect. Eclipse used here just to deny a bit of of that uh, harass available from the Caitlyn rookie, getting a bit of damage on tonight. But he got his blue buff, and that's all that matters. As he is really starting to fall behind when it comes to the CS numbers, almost 20 now. Rookie has had the advantages in this mid lane matchup in this game. He did in game number three as well. Even game one, in, in the lane by himself, he was doing well. Rookie's been looking great the entire series here. And I have to say, I was expecting a little bit more of a bloodbath. Even though you told me it was going to be late game because of the Ezreal, because of this Caitlyn, you told me that they were going to be waiting for these power spikes to fight. I thought, you know what, it's IG and it's top. Maybe they just go for a bloodbath anyway. But actually playing a much more calculated game here in game number four between these two teams. Yeah, and we do see it looks like IG may be trying to create something... Uh, Rookie is hovering over while Le Yen's waiting this push, and Southwind's here as well. They really want to make a play on tonight here. Doesn't have his flash available. If they want to try and force that fight, Rookie goes in, gets the chains on tonight as well. Dodges the stun for himself. Nothing comes of it. Le Yen will still have his flash available. Smites away the giant chicken. Cast is here. So Zhu Yanji gets the stun. There's a flash, but Solar Flare to lock up this trundle. Unleashed power. They are desperately trying to get him down. Finally, they finish the kill. Now Southwind desperately trying to get away with his life. Jackie Love's moved up as well on the Ezreal. True shot barrage to the face. Point blank for the kill. And that was a great job coming out from TES. Punishing IG for looking for the cheeky pick. Ooh. Oh, immediate respect from Puff here. He gets the hell on out of Dodge because he knows that dive was coming. Karsa has Herald, right? So it'd, it'd be so easy to execute. And we keep on seeing this. We keep on seeing top esports getting ahead on these plays around the map. Jackie Love moves in as well. The minion wave on its way. And Ezreal actually pretty decent at getting through these tower plates thanks to that Essence Flux. Yeah, so doing a great job, should be able to secure this objective. And now it's going to be all about the Dragon. I want to see if IG can test because they are here first. Yuyanja is coming from base. Also going to jump over towards Jackie Love. The Shy is actually really struggling in this matchup when it comes to the trades. Just about gets away from the chains. It doesn't get any easier uh -oh. for Kenneth. 369 wants to go for the solo dive. The Shy is shut out of game four. <laughs> and I love the emote spam, but... When it comes to Kennen versus Aatrox, you are able to bully out in the very early stages of the lane because range versus melee, but especially the fact that you're going this AP Kennen, it's a lot more about team fighting. Aatrox is going to do much better than you in the 1v1, and we see 369 abusing his... And it was kind of idle. And it was, it was 369 that was over the moon when he got a friend request from the Shy telling him how much he adores his play. Now you see him in the semifinals. All of that adoration is no, out of the window. He didn't say how much he adored his play, right? He said, I love you. True. Very true. And uh, I don't know if that feeling is still the same after that dive. Let's see what happens here. So, oh, the Shy just walking forward into 369's Q range. And again, he has the Electrocute, so it's a lot more bursty on this Aatrox. His low has no way of sustaining himself under the turret. And I mean... At that point, there's just nothing you can do. Aatrox is going to be able to finish you off. Bear in mind, his flash was not on cool, or was not available, sorry. Which means that 369 is able to capitalize. Rookie now going to grab his blue buff as it's a dragon apiece on the scoreboard right now. Yeah, and we see you, Yanja, threatening this dive. The Shy knows he can't walk forward. Jackie Love gets to go wherever he wants on the map, gets to soak up all of this tower plate gold. Shot Barrage. Going to be used just to try and get some damage down onto this minion wave. They're going to be able to proxy this one. And the Shy forced so far away from the wave, so far away from the XP. At least Rookie and Leanne will be able to answer in the bottom lane. It's going to be really interesting to see how this game uh, continues forward because we have Rookie who's going to have side lane threat overnight, but we have 369 who's going to have side lane threat over the Shy. And oh both my. comps. Look at the gold, though. Look how much gold Jackie Love has got from these plates. 720 gold. And that's all just from that Herald play. That's basically his tier paid for. Yep. He got that for free this game. Yes, he did. 
Insane stuff coming through now. There's top. They're the ones with a gold lead. And it's been a quiet one. It's been a quiet increase in gold, but they're actually 3,000 ahead now. This is what they look like in game number two when they were able to just snowball their way to a victory. IG able to contest much more in the early game of game three where they managed to get one on the board for themselves. Yuyanja has found Rookie. Solar Flag gonna go wide though as Rookie bounces back to his distortion. But this is where the game is gonna really start being interesting. Because you look at carries on both sides, you have a Caitlyn versus an Ezreal. You have two carries that really wanna play from a range. Really a siege comp oh, coming out no. from IG. The Shy's in trouble once again. Unleashed power comes through. He used his flash, but he just doesn't have any damage. 369 with yet another kill there. Knight consistently roaming up. Now IG want to force a play elsewhere, but Rookie takes a huge amount of punishment for his trouble. Down to half HP himself. Herald spawning shortly, I believe. And Top well aware of that situation. Rookie wants a solo kill. Jackie Love could be in trouble here. But there was no vision, and it means... Ro oh, Rookie still has the damage. Ignite there. There's Ooh. an ace to Puff to follow up. I love the new the synergy with the new AD carry. Taking out your former AD carry, and IG don't want to opt into any river fights at a man disadvantage, with a Caitlyn especially. So finding the kills that they need... And Jackie Love once again, even on this safe pick in the Ezreal, getting caught out of position, and I thought with the first distortion not landing. I didn't think Rookie would have the damage, but they managed to finish it off anyway. Yeah, and still, TS is gonna be able to pick up that Herald. Should be looking to open up mid turret. And Caitlyn's a very hard champion to play around when you're behind, right? Because she's the type of champion that needs to be sitting in front of the enemy turret with vision like at her side in this siege scenario. When you're not able to do that, you're actually not very strong in these like small skirmishes and team fights. I want to take a moment here to talk about our mid laners, but more specifically to talk about Rookie, because we've been talking about whether or not he's the best mid laner in the LPL, whether or not that's going to be Knight that takes that title for himself. And or this Duimbi. series is going to, or Duimbi, yeah. This series is going to be a big factor on who gets to call themselves that for now, at least. But that's kind of been a big battle for Rookie his whole career. He was behind Faker back in LCK. Back in 2014, he was considered the second best to Faker. A similar story now. But he wants to prove himself. 369 is hiding on a ward. <laughs> And oh, the geez. whole of IG are coming. 369. Uh, the walk of shame to get away. He did have his flash though, so he's going to be fine on that one. Now Herald in the mid lane, coming out from top esports. I just love the 200 IQ plays that IG thinks of, but they are going to lose mid lane turret for it. Yeah, the ward is spotting out 369, but costs his flash in the end. Rookie. Ooh. He wants a pick. He wants to find someone. Carson knows he's there. Carson throwing the Carson must Sonic Wave into the brush. Oh, Carson might be in trouble. Anyway, though, there's a lot of damage from Rookie. Kicks him out of range of the chains. Nicely done there from the top esports jungler. And that might just open up this dragon. But everyone's still here from IG. Still. I, uh, TS have the composition that wants to fight. They have the Leona. They have the AOE coming in from the Aatrox and Syndra. Dragon gets burst through. They're onto Lien now. CC used onto him. Bear in mind the Shy wants a team fight. This is where the Kennen pick comes into its own. Good Q onto Rookie on the back line. Jackie Love gets on out. Yu Yanja actually flashing away. True shot barrage across the team as well. Jackie Love's not done just yet. He wants a bit of revenge for his death earlier. But at the same time, the shy on this cannon. Ooh. Oh, nice. Whoa. Gonna be gone. No! Gets away with his life. Rookie can't finish the kill. Caster just over the wall now. Knight having to flash once again that summoner on cooldown. And IG now barrel into this mid lane. Bear in mind, they've got a Caitlyn. They take towers incredibly fast. Yep, this is exactly the situation they want to be in. Still not able to take it right now. And 369 creating pressure on the bottom half of the map. Ooh, Jackie loves being aggressive here, jumping forwards with. His arcane shift forces IG away. The mid lane tower will survive. Yep, but uh, looks like Jackie Love is very close to his two item power spike with that Mira Mana and the Triforce. 369 just creating some pressure on the bottom half of the map, so is going to be in a good position to roam up if IG. Ooh. Leanne's going to be fine. Casa moves away in the end. 
We just have so much potential action. I know. Every time I see two players get close to each other with this matchup specifically, you're just like, this is about to pop off. It always feels like it's about to pop off. The Colonel's liking top esports odds right now. Well, and this is what we talked about, right? In the mid game, TS are in a much better position with the Syndra, with the Lee Sin, with the Aatrox, but especially that Ezreal hitting the two item power spike. Puff's still going to need one more crit item to really come into his own with his Caitlyn. Yeah, this is the power trough you were talking about during the mid game where Caitlyn is going to struggle to match up to other carries. And Knight, I think that's maybe kill participation. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know what that stat is. I'm going to move on <laughs> as we see IG. Hey, we know that there were 65 the... Ws for something. There were 65 Ws of it. That's for sure. And 80% on the three. You can't argue with statistics like that, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why Top Esports were able to get ahead in this one. Uh, they're only 2,000 gold ahead, though. They were further ahead earlier on in this one. Rookie has been found by Kazu. who's going to go for the play. Anyway, kicks them both back. 2v1 right now. He's gone way too deep. Rookie stepping up forward, but nice been found by the Shy. Stunned up, and Rookie in with the damage. The Shy gets the kill. Now top in a three versus five. They want to make the play happen anyway. Jackie Love the one that has to do the damage. Southwind caught out. Goes golden, doesn't have his flash available, and surely goes down. Double for Jackie. Jumps over onto Rookie. Gets the triple. Flashes forward and finds the Quadra on his old teammate. And this is exactly what Knight was talking about. Having the better AD carry. Karsa actually jumps in first and dies. But Jackie Love completely turning this around. Jackie Love stabs them in the back. His old squad taken down. And this is the kind of bold play that you watch this matchup for. And this is what we saw last year on the on IG where... Oh, like, he's not done. He wants his replacement too. True Shot Barrage not available. He actually used his heal there. Oh, it was to keep Yunja alive in the pit. Now onto the Baron once again. Casta's here now. Bear in mind, Lian, nowhere near. This Baron will go the way of top esports. In Munch, last year on IG, when we saw the soul laner struggling, Jackie Love was not only the consistent member, but the clutch member. And we see that here again, where Karsa has always struggled in big moments in the LPL. We see that here with him going into two people, just getting picked off right away. We see the Shy already channeling his TP. They do find this kill on Knight, but once we get past all this damage, we already said how Top Esports comp comes out ahead in these scenarios, having a ton of AoE with the Leona and the Aatrox. And Jackie Love just goes god mode right here, consistently jumping forward and showing us why this two item power spike is so massive. It's that E forward, the confidence to go for that play flashes forward and then finishes off a quadra. And remember, we said that, okay, Puff is more stable, more of a pillar, but Jackie Love plays with such confidence and such yeah. swagger. I absolutely love it. And this is why he was so hyped up, coming onto the likes of top esports, replacing Vote again. Look how confident he is. He's completely alone. 1v4, and he's still happy to step forwards. And again, with these items, this is Ezreal's big point. The game is going to do so much damage. <laughs> he's actually tanking up. It's the AD carry. He's tanking up the ace in the hole. Rookie is just over the wall, though. Bear in mind, he is squishy. He's confident, but he's squishy. Rookie goes in, doesn't have the damage. Arcane shift out. And again, IG are really running a pseudo siege comp, like pretty much a siege comp, honestly. We're just going to call it the siege comp. This does not do well when it's behind. You need to have the vision. You need to have like your flanks warded. You need to be the team in front of turrets. That's not the case. And a AP Cannon does not do well in the side lane, despite no. what the Shy is you know, trying to make happen right now. He wants to be in those team fights. He wants to get those big ults. And with a third Drake in the books, top esports, now one away from an Ocean Soul. Arguably the best soul in the game here as the siege continues in this mid lane. And let's just remember that IG have won this series every single time in the last couple of years. Last year, they were the ones to stop Top Esports making it to the World Championship. And right now, Top Esports, they're on the cusp of rewriting history. Okay, so I want to change your I want to change your train of thought. When you just said it's been IG to win these series. Are we not sure that it wasn't Jackie Love winning the series? Because uh, that's yeah. going to stay true after this game. I mean, when you say it like that and then you look at the scoreboard, I can't help but agree with you a little bit. Jackie Love. Maybe the X Factor in this series. And 
the thing that's surprising to me is, again, this was always going to be a top team. But the fact that they were able to come online so quickly, Jackie Love just joined the roster the other week, is absolutely insane. It's unbelievable. And, and, and the influence that he's had on the rest of this roster. Puff is in trouble. True shot barrage all the way across the map. They couldn't quite collapse onto him. Couldn't quite get onto the kill. He didn't have flash. That was real dicey for him. The Shy has to run away on the top side as well. This is going to be the final inner turret removed. Leanne forced away from this one. And we see, looking at items, 369 has picked up the death stance, so can have a lot of resistances on his side as well. I don't know if IG really have the damage to kill him before the rest of TS can kill any frontliner that IG presents. Yeah, that's the big thing. Bear in mind, while this game hasn't been about Knight, if you don't focus on him, and he's got a Banshees, by the way, he is going to finish off your team. He is going to do enough damage to still win a team fight out. You can't count him out. You can't count out 369 either. There are plenty of other damage sources available for top esports. And that's just if they can even get onto Jackie. Lee. And Rookie. I mean, he's doing his best. We've seen this all series from Rookie on the level. Also, block. the Shy doesn't have a Zanyas or anything, so if he goes in, he's hard committed to being in, and you'd expect he just gets blown up by the side of TS. You'd hope that he heads Ooh. towards the Zanyas at some point. 37.6% damage. <laughs> damage. So, you know, it's okay for Knight to have a bit of a quiet game. He's he's done his heavy lifting yes. in the previous games. Jackie Love really coming online right now. And even 369, right, had an amazing game. Jackie, I mean, Knight, sorry, has done more than his fair share of the heavy lifting in this series so far. And consistently looking just incredible on the Syndra. Rookie has been doing his best in this mid lane matchup. And early on in the games, he has had the advantage in the laning phases. But it's once we get to these team fights where it doesn't feel like a Knight versus Rookie battle. It feels like top versus IG and top are coming out on top. Also, it doesn't feel like IG's uh, macro or lack thereof, their lack of team play, can really work out against top teams in these situations. I thought maybe in spring it would be enough to where, you know, teams, their rosters aren't completely together, they're still building synergy, but already being shown here that it's being punished. And I think it's worth mentioning as well that a lot of people coming into this series were saying, look, it's still IG. They came out first in the regular season and all of these small minor issues that we've seen in the past, they're not going to be an issue when it comes to playoffs. There's just too much power on this squad. But those small issues, like bear in mind, they lost two series during the regular split, but they lost 11 games. That's a lot of mistakes to be making, and Top Esports clearly knowing how to punish them. I also want to point out that whenever situations have gotten tough, IG has always been forced to bring Ning back into the roster. They did that at Worlds. They've pretty much done that consistently, and them not doing it here kind of signals maybe a change of philosophy with how they want to go forward, right? Saying, hey, maybe it's not all about winning the spring split as much as it's about committing to Le Yen and keeping him in this roster. Developing as a team. Certainly a good way to go forward, and that Feels like the same philosophy for Top Esports this year as well, bringing Jackie Love into the fold and changing their own style of game. Now they're moving into this mid lane. Rookie off to the side. He'd love to get onto Jackie Love, who's just used his arcane shift, but he's still going to be fine. He's got a Leona next to him. They want to go for the fight here. True Shot Barrage across the team. 369 in from the back line. Yuyanja, the target of Rookie, and that ain't it. Jackie Love now forced away with the arcade shift, but the kick onto the Shy stops his engage. Knight's in trouble, but Caster blocks the ace in the hole. Now onto Yu Yanja, left alone, but Knight hunters for a kill. Caster goes in, and Jackie Love has the damage to follow up. If they can just find a target somehow, Caster survives everything. And now it's on to Rookie to try and find a pick because this would be the Ocean Soul. And it looks like TS are just able to secure this one. These fights are on a knife's edge. The smallest mechanical mistakes are deciding these fights, but TS and come out ahead. Isn't that just the way that this series has to be? It's all about the mechanical prowess of these two teams, and you can see it back and forth, the constant push and pull of these fights. And it's ab absolutely insane to think about TS finally overcoming IG and making their way to a final. IG have been the monkey on their back for a lot of years at this point. 
and they were the ones to shut them out, to deny Knight his opportunity to show up at Worlds. Yep. Top Esports on the cusp of a 3-1 victory. This would be the fifth 3-1 of playoffs so far, if it were to go that way. But look at the goal lead, it's 6,000 in favor of Top Esports. They've got an ocean soul, and you can see that their eyes, they're moving towards the Baron. It's going to be really easy for them to just try and whittle IG down and back off, especially with this Ezreal, and then just heal back up. Doesn't even matter whoever tanks that. 369 will get rooted up towards the bottom side of the map, and actually that's going to be the Mimic used as well from Rookie. 369 forced to use that World Ender. In the meantime, he's just buying time. He's just playing distraction because Baron's already been started, but it was all a bait. They're onto Leanne, and he's deleted immediately. The Shy will fall as well. And many more kills towards top esports. Rookie can do nothing. He's desperate to get on in, but 369 has teleported across the map and joined the rest of his team. Onto this Baron they go with no contest from IG. And IG are completely flustered and TS take advantage of that, finding the picks. We talked about how the Shy has no Zanyas. Once he goes in, he is just gonna get blown up. And TS now not only have Ocean Soul, they have Baron and they're gonna look to end this game. This is their second Baron of the game and they wanna make it their last neutral objective of the game. Yu Yanja takes a bit of a chunk of damage, but you know what? He's happy to if it protects his carries. Now the siege begins. And, ooh. We already have the fight. Pump is taken out, and that might just be lights out for IG as they move on forward. Top Esports, they're facing their demons here in this series, and it looks like they found the answer to their fears. They push on forward towards the Nexus. Southwind has been found out because Jackie Love just ain't stopping. In they go onto the rest of the team. And down goes IG. Down goes the legacy. And up rise Top Esports rewriting history. And Top Esports looking so good, making it to the final in a very dominant fashion. Jackie Love changing so much on this team. Jackie Love was the key all along. He's the key to this rivalry, to this matchup. And Top Esports finally defeat their demons and take a series off of Invictus Gaming. And they look so good. Their team play was on point. Their individual skill really stacking up to IGs, which was the big question mark coming into the day. But again, no questions anymore. Honestly, top esports look like something else. They look so different from the regular season in terms of when you compare just think, a few weeks ago when Fotic was on this roster, where Top Esports were, what expectations for Top Esports were, versus now, 3-1 over Invictus Gaming. Jackie Love has completely changed this squad, and Knight looking as godly as ever. Knight looking godly, and another player I want to highlight is 369, because yeah. last year, 369 was kind of known as a bit of a choker, not performing in high-pressure situations, but this series, <laughs> this man definitely showed up. This year, he's solo diving Knight and dropping an... Uh, he's solo diving the Shy, sorry, and dropping an emotion as he does it as exactly. well. Exactly. So great performance coming out from him, even moving to the bot lane, right? Yu is a rookie, so there were some mistakes, but yeah. he just 3 one IG. I, I mean, what else do you even have to say? And Carsa. Let's yep. do the full circuit and finish on Carsa because he has had a rough split. There's no yeah. two ways about it. He's had some really awful games. I mean, especially when they started putting him on Sejuani, just went 0 2. Didn't look good. But here against Lien, here with Jackie Love's guidance and leadership, it feels like a whole different vision. It feels like the Carsa of old again. Yeah, it feels like Carsa has really been unlocked and allowed to do whatever he wants, especially playing so much better in the early games. And now we saw. We saw everything come together. TS have always had great early games, but now we seeing, see them being able to transition into the mid and late stages, and it looks phenomenal. Yeah, and let's talk about IG as well in this series, because I don't think it was just about the, the new bot lane necessarily coming in either. No. I think Puff and Southwind had a pretty good series for themselves. I think Rookie played exceptionally well, but the fact that top esports were able to play around the top side of the map so heavily really shut the shy out of everything. I mean, we saw what makes IG successful, but also is their downfall in this series with the way they like to play the game through kind of trying to out-mechanic the opponent. It's not always going to work, and Lu Yen not having the best series, the jungle position has always been the big question mark for IG recent, like in recent splits. Yeah, and Lu Yen, I mean, he did have some good moments during this series. Certainly Game 3, he looked amazing on the Kiana. 
But when it was on the Strundle, when it was up against Carsa's Lee Sin, that's when he was read consistently and, and outclassed consistently by Carsa. And it's so important in the early game, especially when you're playing on a team like IG that wants to win through the early game, wants to snowball. That's not what we saw coming through. And we saw during the split, he was a lot more of a beneficiary of the fact that he is winning lanes and would go for invades and play more for neutrals. Not a big ganker. And this series, when his lanes weren't just hard smashing, not able to find those opportunities to get on top of neutrals, and TS completely capitalizing. Yeah, and I want to take another moment to talk about Yu Yanja as well, because you mentioned just a moment ago, he's the rookie in this squad and certainly one of the weaknesses for the side of top esports. But here in this series, despite even getting banned out in one of the games, he still performed exceptionally well. We saw his thresh previously, and that was kind of the highlight for him. That was certainly the, the pick we were expecting. It was banned throughout this entire series, but he still was able to show up. His Alistair looked great. His Karma game as well looked amazing. Well, and right, that's the thing is, he doesn't have that experience or that like map play that we see out of veteran supports, yeah. but his mechanics are still on point. And if you have a leading voice like Jackie Love there, this player is still gonna perform quite well. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I need a minute here because that series, that was something, and I, I just love to see the way that these two teams clash, and what a way for it all to go down as well. Four games in the end, top esports able to take it, and just the, the confidence from Jackie Love on this Ezreal, the quadra kill during that game, able to just jump forward over the wall, take out Rookie, take out the Shy. The two guys from IG that we always praise, that we always talk about, but it's Jackie Love that comes out on top. That's like the massive story here, right? It's Jackie Love beating his former team yeah. and leading TS to be able to take down their demons. Like you said, it's always been IG the one to shut them down. But these two things happening this spring, allowing them to go to the final, they're going to either meet JDG or FPX, that's not a situation I think most fans would have imagined a few weeks ago. Yeah, and when you look at the, the macro play coming out from top esports and the slower, more calculated play that we have seen out of them with Jackie Love, I actually can see them doing decently in that final. I'm excited to find out who they're going to be going up against because, you know, either JDG or FPX, I think that's going to be an insane final. And especially for Jackie Love, it's an opportunity to prove that he wasn't a benefactor of the team he was on in 2018. He was the winning factor. Well, and let's remind people that, again, this roster has only just come together. Yeah. They still get a ton of time. Less than a month ago. <laughs> exactly. So I imagine it only gets better from here. And it's like summer split top esports sounds terrifying. It really does. And I mean... I don't even know where they can go from here because honestly, they looked incredibly strong. So let's talk like going forward. If you're JDG, if you're FBX watching this series, what it is what is it that you, you're going to be able to capitalize on trying to fight against top esports? For against top esports, I really want to see them punishing out Karsa plus Yuyanja. We don't really see this heavy jungle support synergy. When you look at someone like Lu Mao, he's able to consistently roam across the map and create plays. He has windows where he knows Loken is okay. Crisp as well with LWX. Able to leave him in that lane and kind of shut down the solo advantage that other lanes have. So that's where I'd want to look if I'm FPX or if I'm JDG. Get rid of the support network and then you can get rid of the carries. We'll see if that's going to happen in the final, but we've got to decide the second finalist first. But before we do that, before we jump into tomorrow's series, we're going to name our MVP for game number four. It's got to be Jackie Love. He got the quadra kill. 40% of the team's damage coming into top esports and changing the game. Yeah, and I mean, no one else could contend for this MVP. The big thing about a great Ezra player is when they're able to aggressively E or flash forward, knowing their limits. And Jackie Love did that so well this game. We actually see him Eing forward here off to the side, trying to shut out Puff, getting back into this fight and doing so well to find all these kills. I just can't believe that this 3v5 turned into a quadra kill for Jackie Love. Such great team play as well. This wasn't just on the back of Jackie Love. This was great play all across the board from Top Esports, but then he jumps on forward. The rest, you've already seen. The quadra kill comes through, and then he nearly turned it into a penta kill just after as well. Yeah, and great job here. He was the one going in on this Ezreal to find the kills and make sure that his team is able to secure the Baron. Yeah, just able to dish out the damage. As we said, 40% when you've got a Syndra in the mid lane as well and an Aatrox in the top lane. That's a lot of damage to contend with, but knowing how to abuse that Ezreal power spike. And the whole team basically saying, oh, has, has Jackie Love got Triforce? Oh yeah, time to go in, time yeah. to force this win. That's exactly what top do. And now, 
3-1. They're going to make it to our grand finals here for spring. And I'm not going to lie, I predicted top esports, but I was nervous doing it. But now they move on into our finals. What an exciting timeline. And let's be honest, even if you thought that top esports would win, I don't know if many people thought it would be as convincing as this was. I expected a really close back and forth series today. But TS completely shutting out IG. Yeah, and I think a lot of this was momentum off of that first game when IG was so far ahead and it all fell apart in that one magical fight in the bottom lane and top esports from that point just didn't stop rolling. No, the problem was, like Puff said in his, his video, that it didn't go to five. If it had gone to five games, you know, he would have been prepared <laughs> to <laughs> shut TS out. But but no, on that, on that end, TS playing very well. We also will have IG in the third and fourth place match as well. Yep. So it's something to look out, look forward to going forward. Yeah, you can see that on the screen. That's going to be on the 29th at the same time as all of our other series. But 27th is tomorrow. That's going to be JDG going up against FPX. So Lyric, while I've got you here, let's have a brief moment to talk about this matchup because FPX in their quarterfinal look super clean. FPX looking good, but they have shown some, I think, bad play around a lot of the neutral objectives. And JDG, to me, look absolutely terrifying. This team is undefeated with Zoom this split. They haven't yep. dropped a single game. And uh, it's going to throw it out there. For me, I think JDG take the whole the whole split. So, But I expect it to be very close. It's gonna, it's possible that it's going to be a big mountain for them to climb. We'll see, though, because Yagao as well on his LeBlanc, I believe, undefeated this split as well. So... JDG looking real scary. FPX also, that's going to be a hell of a matchup tomorrow. Make sure that you're going to tune in and watch for that one. But just for any of our viewers at home, they're going to know FPX. They're the world champions. Give them a little bit of a, a, a briefing on what to expect out of JDG. So JDG to me is the best holistic team in the LPL. They, have, they don't have a weakness in any position. Their stars are actually their top jungle and support. So not typically where you look for an LPL team. So it's a lot more about bringing the system together and especially these team fights and skirmishes. Yeah, especially Lumao in that bottom lane, the support. He brings bards sometimes. He's a and clean it's fun bard. to watch. Also, used to be a Fiddlesticks main. Like we used to see the Fiddlesticks support. That has been reworked though. Also, a big point, Kanavi, probably the best jungler in LPL this split. Yep. The man has been absolutely insane. So again, it's going to be a very fun series to watch. This new exciting team, not really new. Th these players have been together for a while, but up against the most recent world champion. Yeah, up against the world champion that looks incredibly good as well. Their series against EDG, FPX, keeping it clean, keeping those wins coming. They did lose out one game against arguably the best team fighters in the LPL. So I think that's a reasonable loss to take, but ultimately FPX came out on top. And I'm excited, as you rightly say, about Kanavi. He's the only jungler to be near the top of the list when it comes to MVPs. The other three MVP candidates are mid laners. It's Rookie, it's Knight, and it's uh, Do and Beat are the only other three MVP contenders for that top spot. So Kanavi etching his name in with those legends of the mid lane, that says a lot about the player. Yeah, really excited. And again, whatever matchup we get in the final is going to be really awesome. Just excited to see what top esports can continue to show us after what we saw today. Well, that is going to bring us to the end of today. Thank you very much for joining me. This has been Lyric. I have been myself. Munch, <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking like that, but it's time to close the day out. As you can tell, I'm tired. I'm sure you guys are as well. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. We'll see you then.